what have you worked on this summer? Where are you trying to improve? Uh, I was trying to improve my lateral quickness, uh, mostly on the defensive end. I was just trying to improve myself, uh, get to my spots easier and quicker than what I did last year. Uh, and just overall, just trying to make my teammates better. I've been trying to improve on my passing, trying to get the young guys involved more. Some of the feedback you got when you put your name out there for the NBA draft, or is this something you just felt you need to work on? Uh, well, some feedback I got was uh, weight, uh, just improving my weight, which I have been. I've gained five to eight pounds since last last year already. Uh, some more was just bar handling it and just showing more than what I did last year. You know, they've seen the massive improvements year after year. So uh, they're expecting like more this year. Without Deuce, not that you're going to be the point guard, but do you have to assume some some ball handling responsibilities because of that? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, since we have a a lot of new guys, uh, the ball's going to be in my hands a lot. Me and Sean's hands a lot. Uh, just because we know the system, we know the offense, we know how coach wants it to be ran, and we just know how the game goes, especially in Big Twelve play. Uh, eventually, you know, guys like Malik, uh, Keydren's going to get a lot more minutes this year. Uh, Seth, Kobe, you know, once the young guys and the newer guys start figuring things out more, then we'll, that'll relieve me and Sean off the, off the ball a little more. Taz, I was asking Gabe, obviously expectations for the team would have been different this year had Deuce and, and Derek come back. I was asking, I'm going to ask you, is, is there a process at all for you guys in getting over that and saying, you know, you could have been this or, uh, but but now is, is that something easy for you guys to to handle and, and, and move on, or is there a process at that? I mean, yeah, it was a it was a little process, but we knew, like we knew, I I knew it was when Cancun when we played in Cancun, I was like, Deuce is a pro. I don't know how long he's gonna be here. So we are me already knew like internally as a team that we knew that Deuce was most likely not gonna be here at DC. Same thing. Uh, so we got over it pretty fast. Uh, I guess I can compare it to the same thing with Sags. I was supposed to have Sags my junior year, my first year here, and then he's not here. So it's like you know a little different. You got to work around that. But we're losing like I don't know how many points between Deuce and DC, but that's like 38, almost 40 points probably. Uh, rebounds, obviously, the someone that can lead the team in being Deuce. Uh, so now we just got to have a more conscious effort, just spreading like have an even like an even effort throughout everybody so I feel like just relying on a couple of people like four or five pieces I think is going to be more relying on the whole team this year. Is this, is this team better in your mind with you and Sean on the court at the same time or coming in you know and, and, and spreading out your 10 fouls and your points and that? Um, I feel like we're better on the at the same time on the court at the same time because you just got to worry about us two being weapons. Uh, just I, just how I imagine it, just me and Sean on the wing or in corners, and you can't help off neither one of us. So that's opening up driving lanes, and bigs are now ISOed in the post, so they can work, you know, just one-on-one, -on -one, you know, working on the offense. Uh, that, since you can't leave me and Sean, that just opens up so much more, like driving lanes and lob opportunities. And even when we're now on the same, uh, when we're now on the floor at the same time, it's just we, it's, you can't leave none of us. Uh, even not even just us two. We have other people that can shoot just as capable, and I feel like we're gonna show that this year. As last year, Deuce and Jordan handled the ball most of the time. Who, in your opinion, are the most confident guys with the ball in their hands right now? Uh, actually, I think both our point guards, uh, Key and Malik, are just as comfortable as anyone that I play with since I've been here. Because again, they're older guys. It's not like a there was incoming freshmen and they just got here. Uh, again, I played with Malik on a JUCO, a JUCO showcase team after our, my freshman year, going to our sophomore year. So I knew already what he was. Uh, he's going to bring that driving intensity, defensive intensity. Like him and Kedron is going to be – we see a battle every day in practice. Uh, I'm comfortable handling the ball. Sean's comfortable handling the ball. Even Gabe, comfortable handling the ball. JB's getting better. So uh, we, we're pretty comfortable. We got older guys that – you know, can take the pressure off our point guards a lot. Gabe mentioned this, and I don't get into specifics, but he's a lot more plays off the ball for you and Sean mm -hmm. than maybe last year. Is that what you see? Yeah, uh, because we know that a lot of defenses are going to be keyed in on us this year. So you don't want to waste a lot of energy just trying to go one-on-one -on -one and just try to make a play for yourself. You kind of want to just let the offense flow in and 
us being off the ball, we love being off the ball because we love coming off of screens, setting screens for other people so we can get open and let them get open. So having us move off the ball is, is actually, in my opinion, uh, it's a good move. But, you know, when the in the game situation, it's going to be like kind of like Deuce. Even though Deuce handled the ball a lot, primary the game, uh, we're going to have the ball a lot because we're the playmakers, shot creators, and we're going to handle the ball most of the time. Doesn't that maybe require maybe a little better passing than you've done in the past? Yes, yeah. Uh, that's one thing I've been trying to work on this year as well, like more so than just shooting and scoring because I know that I can improve on that too, but I wanted to work on more weaknesses than improving on like the skills I already possess. Uh, I played point guard in junior college my sophomore year, so I was, that's when I really became comfortable like handling the ball because I was never that. I was always the catch off the wing type of guy. But after that year, I felt more comfortable bringing the ball up, just not feeling as pressured. And that's something you're going to have to – prove beyond here anyway. You're yeah. probably going to be a lead guard, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. With your passing, what is it about it that you want to work on? Is it accuracy? Is it when you throw the ball, finding guys? What are the things you really want to improve on? Well, just making the, the right reads, I feel like. Uh, just reading the defense and just seeing what type of passes I can make out of certain situations. That's what I was just working on. Like When I was working with uh, Wani, Juwan Staten, over the, over the summer, uh, we was mo mostly doing like pick and roll stuff, seeing what the big is doing and how you're going to play off of that. And all different types of coverages, uh, passing out of double teams and passing out the post, just working on all different types of situations. What do you see out of the freshman guard, Seth and, and Kobe? What's your thoughts on those two? One thing about Seth, Seth's uh, confidence level is very high, which is very good. Uh, he has that, that, in a sense, same thing with Deuce, like their confidence level when they first got here, it was very high. And you can tell that Seth really works on his game. Uh, Kobe, he's a way better shooter than what I thought he was coming into, uh, coming into here. He was probably the only person I really haven't done too much research on prior to him coming here. But now that he's here, they all listen. Like, they're coachable. Like, they're, like me, Sean, Gabe, us being leaders, they, we talk to them respectfully, and they give respectful answers. Like, they just – they just love to, to learn, and I feel like they're going to be great players years to come. Taz, who's going to get the rebounds that Derek got last year? I, I get a couple. I get a few. I, I always said they, they, they always took my rebounds. Uh, nah, but uh, I feel like we're going to be good. Paulie is a monster down there. Like, Paulie is, is, is incredible, is an incredible offensive rebounder. I feel like defensively we're going to be a great, team rebounding team I feel like last year we didn't rebound as a team again we had a couple people that just kind of got like all the rebounds Gabe DC like this kind of grab all the rebounds even Emmett uh but I feel like it's gonna be more team rebounding this year offensively I think we are just gonna be as good as the recent years uh with Polly, Damon, Gabe is who he is Along those lines maybe last year were you guys guilty maybe a little bit of watching Garrett go get the ball yes yeah yeah uh Cause we got, you just get so accustomed to uh, him just getting everything. Uh, and then before Oscar left, we was accustomed to getting, seeing both of them get every single rebound. And then we had the transition from that. We said, okay, now we have to help. We have to help down there. Taz, when you think about lineups, you think about a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. It yeah. sounds like you can play without a traditional one and still be effective on offense. Uh, yeah. Uh, as as long as you have guards that really know what they're doing the ones that can get people into into the offense. I feel like we have guards that without a traditional point guard, we can still get into the same type of offensive sets we want to get into. Same thing defensively. I feel like we have the defensive capability to not just have that uh, one guard who just picks up 94 feet and he's the only one that can do it. I feel like we're all pretty capable of doing that. As you come up through basketball as a kid and you play on teams with – you know, maybe 10 kids or 12 kids and, you know, only seven or eight of them really play. You're on a team that with 14 guys. What's any difference there? What's that What's that like? I'm sure it's a little different, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, of course, uh, rotations is going to be cut down. You know, 14 pretty much can't play. Uh, it would probably be cut down to probably 9, 10, 11, depending on what Hugs wants to do. But in terms of depth, that just – it's great for us because one guy can have an off night and someone else can step in and assume that role. And then defensively, if we just so happen we just we want to press and then now we have bodies to throw at you and you'll get another team will get more tired than us. You know, our 
our team, our 15th, 14th man is going to be better than most people's. I guess the good thing is in practice, you don't have to get right back into the, the drill. Oh, right? no, I still do. <laughs> <laughs> I still do. Uh, yesterday, they, the Big 12 put out its preseason team. Did you get a chance to look at it and notice that there weren't very many WB guys on that list? Yeah, I saw the list. I saw the list. <laughs> on your shoulder? Uh, not really a chip on my shoulder. Uh, I feel like every year is always a chip on everybody's shoulder. So it's really not just uh when you get named to like a a team, a preseason team, because that's it's really just a preseason team. Really doesn't mean anything. It's really just a name on a team. Uh, I feel like actions, our actions, is gonna show way more than that. No, Sean, does that raise an eyebrow a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, guys. Cool, no problem.